Hello everyone, welcome to the Nordic RTS Report with me, Vu Norse, bringing you yet another Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever cast. And boy, I got a good one for you today. It's all oh my fmichlalalalala. I mean, I'm just gonna go just completely out there, and this is one of the best replays I've ever seen, at least recently now. It's just so damn good. I promise you, you will not regret watching this. So anyway, we're gonna get down to the business then. We're gonna call this up here Team 1, this down here Team 2. And we're gonna set things down a little bit so we can introduce the te teams. We have down here Black Owl going Cybern first land in a Elven Flesh. <clears throat> we have up here again another Cybern going Morgulus Prime going Cybern first land in a white. We have... Again, actually, Jesus, he come, he uh, he comes up here a lot. Rock here, going Simon as well in uh, Simon First Land in a uh, poopy brown. So that is the team one for today. And yes, I know, I know, I get a lot of games here now and replays with Rock in it, but that's because he's the one sending me replays. He's the one feeding me with replays. And I gotta say, he's become a really good player. But anyway, enough with the spam of like promoting stuff and blah 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 blah. blah. But anyway, now we're gonna go to team two, and team two down here is legendary uh, with elite letters. Is UEF going in a blood red? Then we have. Sins going Seraphim in a concrete grey, and lastly we have Bullydozer going UEF in a nice blue. So that is the teams, a full Cybern team against UEF and uh, Seraphim. So now we're going to speed things up to plus two because let's face it, every single time we have these kind of matches, it goes a little bit slow in the beginning because every team tries to build up their base so that they can get the most out of their uh, resources so yeah that's gonna be interesting to see it looks like they have a little bit of problem here though with pings but uh, pingers but anyway <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure where that reference is from but uh, I'll figure it out now we see that, that early uh, when it comes to early military stuff we see that uh, Roque has already gotten a lab out uh, that's supposed to go and hunt a little bit where is it going though it is trying to get on the back here probably gonna try to get engineers that tries to go after these two mass points it's gonna be interesting it is going to be interesting to see what is happening. Gods are sometimes talk a little bit fast. Well, that is an understatement, but you know what I mean. It's sometimes difficult understanding how I'm s even speak this fast. I mean, I sometimes mumble, but that is, you know, in the past. Uh, Eco-wise, though, we see, though, that so far, Roquet Bullet... Okay, it goes a bit up and down now in the beginning though, so it's a bit difficult to understand who is actually in the lead. But anyway, though, we see though that uh, Legendary has built a second air factory though, but with very little power. Getting a, a hydrocarbon power plant up over on this side, and we see though that a lab is taking out one of the scouts to the UF here, but now two strike uh, strikers are coming in though for a bulldozer. But now four mantis along with a scout is coming down here. It's going to be interesting to see if they manage to do anything. Uh, not going to get a lot done due to the fact that the uh, UEF commander uh, ACU to bulldoze is there. But now though this lab is actually attacking these mass extractors and is sending one tank down though. But um, I've seen time and time and time again that Mikering can actually take out one striker. Uh, and at least one mass extract is going down and Rokia sees this and removes his hunter. Probably going to send it down here or in the back. Uh, no one sent the units back yet, but we see though that uh, Sins is sending his uh, engineer over this side. Sins is a 1400 rank player, then you have Roque that is 1200, uh, Bulldozer 1100, Black Owl 1300, and then you have Morgulus Prime in the middle uh, going as an 800 and Ruffel uh, Roth, sorry, Legendary is 700 ranked, so it got fairly balanced, but since it's 1400, so it's going to be interesting to see if Black Owl and uh, Roque will be able to stem the tide of this team, or it will be on, on the other complete reverse things. But now let's see though, what's going down here though, a little bit of uh, command engagement, but both falls back since it's not that much going on. <coughs> But, uh, so far in the beginning, it is a little bit quiet, but that is understandable, and boy, it's hot now today. 
Uh, okay, that's because I'm in a confined space in my room and I didn't open the window, so I'm an idiot. But that's very nice though, I managed to do a very nice jog today, that is very good. I mean, I'm starting to actually get more healthy, more fit. I've stopped drinking soda and chips and candy. Uh, and that's gonna do wonders for my, uh, for like the crap that was in my body, so that's very good. But now I see though, an upgrade here for... Uh, Black Owl, that looks like to be the gun upgrade for uh, Black Owl, if I am not mistaken. The range, yes it is, because it was 300 uh, energy consumption. Do we see any sort of upgrade for okay? Oh my, he's going for stealth on his commander. So this should be interesting to see, but now though we see a push is coming down here though for Black Owl. And going down very far with his own commander and pushing quite now and going 14 kills already on his commander. Now going down in for the hydrocarbon power plant and I think that will do severe damage to uh, Legendary's eco or energy. Yes, I think he's living off the, his other teammates energy levels but now he's coming in though trying to uh, damage and attack Black Owl but now all of these mantis are coming in here though. Not sure what he was doing earlier. But uh, this will be the first kill of the match, I think. I mean, looking at it realistically, and I was going into red and actually going to go down into uh, plus now, and boom! At 7 minutes and 20 seconds, Legendary has been taken out of the game, uh, and Black Owl is still on 6,000 health points, and uh, is going strong with a lot of units to back him up, so... But now do we see, though, what do we see? We see a gun upgrade is being produced here though for since you can see it because of the uh, energy things at least that's what I've been uh, I assume then mostly because of the 300 energy and 10 mass so that I can just see that okay usually it uh, builds an, an, a, like a, a oh, blah, blah, blah. it builds a gun upgrade but anyway uh, so far very good nice and chat and stuff like uh, oh my god I've missed this what the hell it must have it must have been a drop! Oh my god, I'm so terribly sorry, I missed this! It was a drop and it took out all these mexes and I think some of them were T2 as well. I mean, it has to be during this part of the game. I'm so sorry, I gotta start be. I have to start being better at doing this, being up, but there's so much going on now. I mean, for example, now we can see though that Sins is taking quite a lot of fire you know, from all these units, but he still has a lot of units back in the server. His commander has a lot of uh, fire rate as well on his commander. Uh, Black Owl is firing, but now he's getting. A little bit cut off here, uh, he still has a lot of forces though, but uh, that's a lot of artillery firing at him, so he needs to start actually migrating his commander, otherwise he's gonna actually take a hell of a lot of damage here. And I'm terribly sorry Black Owl, but please, you got him migrating your commander, but now he's gonna go down into red, and he's going actually down, and so, so uh, the, uh, I'm lost at words, so soon after Legendary went down, Black Owl goes down to Sin's guns of, on, on his own ACU. And this is going to be interesting because now every single thing on the side of the left flank is just gone completely POP! And at the moment, what is left though is Rook Care and uh, Morgulus Prime on uh, Team 1 and then we have Bulldozer and Sins on Team 2 and uh, now the teams can seem a little bit unbalanced though but that's uh, quite a lot of units though for uh, Rokea and uh, Bulldozer so there might be an engagement going on here but Rokea has the um, stealth going on so uh, can he be seen with the stealth? No he can't so unless there is scouting going on he can't be seen or shot at from, uh, from a distance. So now that we're going to see though, what is um, Sins doing? He's actually now completely free to just take everything on this uh, side here unless uh, Morgulus Prime is doing something about it. This is very fascinating to see. This is very fascinating indeed. And uh, now Rokay okay, is just firing from afar and just firing at a distance. They're trying to whittle um, Bulldozer down. And how we're doing though so far on the eco-wise? Uh, 1800 mass for... Since Roque has about 2000 mass, Bullydozer has about 1000 and Morgulus Prime 1600. So, so far, actually, Roque is well in the uh, reclaim game, and that's a lot of mantis. I'm just sorry, but whole look at all those mantis. And it just strikes me now that this game, this map is very nice. And oh my god, I should have brought something to drink. My throat is getting very sore now because okay, now we see now, blah, 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 blah. now we see a lot large push coming in here of a bull from a uh, blah, blah, blah. Two Bulldozer from Rokea, and all of these mantis are now pouring into Bulldozer's camp. And I, 
I mean, unless he falls back and starts sending in his own strikers, I don't see how he's going to be able to do this. Now that we see that the nail shots, we have tech two though for uh, Sins, and he has been allowed to just roam free on the left flank. But now this is what we want to see though. This all of this just firing between so much firing and so much, so many units just shooting at each other. So many lasers just going back and forth and exchanging fire and. Roque is doing actually superbly well though. He's pulling command back and forth, back and forth, and he has the gun fire rate and range on it. And with, uh, does he have the ability to overcharge? Yes, he has. So he has the ability to overcharge. The bulldozer has the ability. Yes, he does. Uh, but he doesn't have any upgrades on his commander. So uh, Roque is doing better in that regard. Uh, taking quite a lot of fire, lost all of these units, and that is a lot of mass. Look at the field of mass in this vicinity. That is just amazingly crazy. But now the bulldozer tries to push back, but Roque can just stay outside of bulldozer's commander's gun range. And sure, he has a lot of strikers, but uh, unless he starts to reclaim all this stuff, I think his eco will be doing okay. He's actually doing very well so far, but can he? Um, hold up against the spam too. Okay, but now Roquet is getting a tech to land factor HQ as well. We see though that a Morgulus Prime is trying to push out here, but he encounters Sin's commander. And now though, we see that finally, well, not finally, but now we see that uh, Bullidos has come. Um, uh, I can't even speak now. This is just so incredible to see. He's, he's basically just buckling under the sheer amount of Mantis fire and the commander is being used very offensively. And since it's holding the team back up together here now, having secured the flank here and now spreading out like a disease to take all of this mass that is just lying here for the taking. That is just so much mass. And okay down here is just keep. keep it's just keep firing and now we see pillars and take two coming out on the field here for bulldozer but i don't think it will be enough it's too late though because Roque has had um access to take two and he has to come on there like a uh overcharge the pillars oh 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 i gotta breathe i gotta breathe <clears throat> okay okay so what do we have to deal with there what do we have to deal with let's get a bit of an overlook here now so, so far, Bulldozer seems to be struggling very hard, uh, and I'm a little bit surprised to see that uh, Sins is not supporting Bulldozer, but I suppose he has a plan to try to get on the side here and take out Roque's main base and hope that Bulldozer can just uh, occupy uh, Roque long enough so he can get out on the side, but... I don't know. Uh, he first has to, he has to first deal with uh, Morgulus Prime's uh, small forces. He has a few units here though, exchanging fire between the Seraphim forces and the Cybrans. And so far it can work, but that's a lot of Ilshivas on the field though for Sins. But now that we see that the Tech 2 Land Factor HQ is going to go down for Bulldozer. And where is Bulldozer? Here he is, he's falling back now in the face of that his base is falling and he's going to lose a lot of eco on this one and so far he's uh, getting a plus one in uh, eco wise but, oops sorry that was wrong and now that we see that, uh, hang on Okay, okay, sorry, I'm back, okay. I uh, just had a little bit of stuff there going on, but anyway, now, where was I? Yes, we was indeed here, and I was eating all that. Sins is going down here with his commander, and a lot of Elshivas here. But now we see also that Morgulus Prime is taking a lot of beating here, though. Didn't probably not expect to see the commander and so many Elshivas going in here, and he needs to get his butt out of there, because the Cybran arm is made out of paper in comparison to all of these Elshivas units, and taking a lot of fire. But now we see that the Elshivas coming out from the behind, from the behind as well, and now Morgulus Prime is going to go down! This is going to... This is, this is horrible to see! Oh my god! Okay, Morgul's Prime goes down at the 14 minute and 30 seconds mark. And now it's going to be interesting to see what's going on though. Now it's only Bullidozer and Sins against Roquette. Though Bullidozer has his capabilities of um, assaulting diminished. So this should be interesting to see what will happen. Now Roquette has a sizable eco though. He's getting to build uh, at Bullidozer's former base. So uh, now it will be interesting to see though, because now it looks like uh, 
Sins has started a spam bunch as well as the Tech 2. And all of these units now for K is standing out here now. It's going to be interesting to see where are they going to go. Uh, will they try to go down here and try to take out the Tech 2 Land Factor HQ? Uh, that will remain to be seen. Though, uh... Oh, this is going to be interesting and dangerous for Rokeh because now the units and the commanders to Sin is coming up here on the left flank and going into the base and it's not too much but now we see that a lot of engineers are starting to build uh, point defenses and wall segments around in his base hopefully hopefully to stem the tide of all these Ilsevers and Thams coming in along with all this spam and now we see that Zuis is coming as well but now Roquet is getting his own units into Sen's base and it's destroying the power here for uh, Sin, and what does that do to his eco? He has so far okay when it comes to energy, but now he's starting to rapidly fall, and he has a lot of uh, energy stores, but that is going to slowly deplete as he goes for all of his eco energy, and then the land factor HQ, and if he lose this one, he can't get any more uh, illustrators from anywhere on the field, and if he takes out this land factor HQ, uh, Sin has no ability to build Tech 2 unless he upgrades it as well again, but now we see he's converging on Rockhair's base, and he's just storming in with everything he has, and hopefully he's going to try to take it down. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on now, because there's so much going on here, and uh, down here though we see that Rokeh has been successful in taking out the Tech 2 Land Factor HQ. These units will go down, Rokeh is standing over here, so this is what we want to be following, uh, paying attention to. I'm sorry, it's just that, oh my god, this is just fantastic indeed, and just, oh, <laughs> I love the overcharges. I mean, look at that bloody yellow beam of destruction. And I will see that uh, since just standing in the distance, just shooting while his main units are standing inside of the base. But there's so many point defenses there uh, that Roque is putting out, and I think that saved him. Without those point defenses, he wouldn't have made it. But now uh, Bulldozer says back, but I think actually Sin can actually just stand here and just uh, fire on his own until he gets reinforcements. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, Roque wants to send his own commander up here. I don't know because uh, a lot of these units d don't really have the firepower necessary to stand against uh, Sin's commander now because has Sin upgraded anything else though? He has three ranks of veterans, see, so that gives 19 ha um, health point per second regen. He has the gun upgrade though, but nothing else. But a command surfing commander is bred for war, so it is a very good one when it comes to offense. But now a lot more units are coming in here for Sins and going to try a second time getting into uh, Roquet's main base. But Roquet has built a secondary base down here though and starting to spew out units. So it's going to be interesting to see though because now Sins has lost his main base. But he has a lot of mass extractors here but none of them are upgraded though. So how is Sins doing on the eco front? He is doing okay actually. He has managed to get his uh, energy levels back to normal and Roquet is just bonlocking mass now and just trying to stay into it. How is he doing on the mass reclaim? 12,000 mass for Roquet. Well, BC Sins has reclaimed only 4,500 and Bulldozer is on 1,600. So Roquet is just surviving on pure mass at this point. Just standing there, stemming the tide. I gotta say, I applaud you, okay? This is fantastic. And fantastic work from Sins and every other player. This is one of the replays I just... You just want to see every single time. It's just fantastic plays. Back and forth. Commanders dying here and there. Bases uh, being taken down. And uh, is this going to be a base trade-off? That is going to be inter interesting to see if uh, Sins is going to be able to take down this. And Roque has to move down here though. That would just be the icing on the cake. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to see that all of these Rhinos are managing to hold, hold Sins back. And... Um now we see though that uh, Roque seems to be starting to move his commander back now, uh, having confidence in his uh, forward base here uh, being enough to uh, hold off Bulldozer and... Oh, that's a lot of Illustrators coming in though, but uh, anyway, now I want to keep track on what is going up here now. Uh, since he's trying to go for uh, Roque, but how is Roque doing? Oh, he's doing okay on power though, so he's not going to be able to uh, take out his energy levels. So mass-wise, uh, how are we doing on though? He is... Is Roque reclaiming? He is. He has reclaimed a lot down here, though, so he's going to be able to get a lot of mass from that. He's getting out Medusas. He's getting out Mantis. He's getting out Rhinos. 
all the time holding back Sims, but will it be enough now? Okay, comes in though, but uh, now Sims is starting to get quite a lot of ranks of entrances here. He has 22 health regen per second. And now he's just got a fifth ranks of veterans with 25 health points per second regenerated. So that is a Rambo com at the moment, even though he's only got a gun upgrade. He's got a full rank of veterans in retrospect to Rocares, three ranks of veterans. But he has the stealth though. But now he's getting into line of sight though to sense his uh, unit. But now, since uh, Roque is here with full health, almost as much as Sims, he will be able to uh, hold off these units, hopefully, until he can get his own units massed and then st start sending in. But I don't know, man. I mean, Sims is starting to look very well in place here. He's got quite a lot of units though, just getting constant reinforcements. But now though, that all of these Illustrators are standing down here, but uh, some Mant is trying to do some damage, but uh, all of these Illustrators are just standing at the ready. Uh, but now though, I mean, this is what we want to keep following. I'm sorry, Bullydozer, but uh, not really much going down here. Uh, but here though, we see though that Roquet and Sins is exchanging fire. And so far, it seems that Roquet is holding against uh, Sins. But, I mean, Sins is getting in units left and right, but they're just sporadic, one at a time. And he's gone to Ithupda. He needs to concentrate his forces, but now it looks like he's trying to do that and block uh, Sin. Uh, so, uh, but now Roque is taking quite a lot of damage going into 8,000. The same goes for Sins. So, uh, both commanders are dealing quite a lot of damage to each other. But now, Sins are taking quite a lot of fire here. All of these units trying to block off Sins' escape. And can this be a command ejection? He's going into the red. 3,500 health points and dropping steadily. But now, the units to Sins are coming in and dealing quite a lot of damage to all of these units trying to get Sins. And Roque is trying to follow him. But now he stops and tries to worry about the units that Sins is sending in. And Sins is standing on 1,700 health points and climbing now. And oh my god! The commanders are just standing there, going back and forth, trying to take each other out, but... Oh, Roque is such a solid build on his base with so many defenses, and he's constantly getting out, and his ego is okay, he's stable. Um, the Roque is getting more and more mass as we speak. BC Sims, how is he doing, though? He is doing an acceptable thing, though, but now that we see that the push here out from Bulldoz is um, a very honorable attempt, but there is Tech 2 amongst the ranks here of uh, Roquet, so he's actually fighting on two fronts, so I mean, I gotta say, thumbs up to Roquet for this one, this is fantastic, and since has just, uh, after he lost the team member, just carried the team and just kept it up after Bulldozer and the Legendary just died, well, Bulldozer didn't die, but you get my meaning here. <laughs> mm. Now since are just rapidly, slowly and steadily being pushed back, it's gonna be in interesting to see if that will happen anything with, um, now that we see that uh, two tech point, point defenses are being produced here, but will they, the last one be finished in time? Oh my! The last point defense was not finished just in a nick of time, like 1-2% to spare. But now Roque is following after Sins, and uh, how is Roque doing on the uh, veterancy? He has 30 health points of uh, bonus though. Well, uh, now that Sins has only 10, uh, now it's a 17 plus. I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean if you different health uh, stadium you get less or more? I'm not sure. But if anyone could tell me, that would be great. Now we see that. Okay, I'm gonna have to put, go into split screen here. How the? F How did I do that again? Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, gonna go down here. I'm gonna go see what happens over here though. Uh, we see that um, Roque is fine. Yep, yeah, sure with you. And now we see that Roque is fighting on two fronts here, now sending these units over here. If he sends them on the left flank here, going after the others, I am now going to uh, join back again. If Roque sends his units over here, uh, down on the left flank side here, he can just take out the entire eco to Sin, so he has to at least choose where he wants to go. And, but that's a lot of T1 units though for Sins, but now Roque has to take tech advantage because there has been no uh, Tech 2 Land Factor HQ, except for here. Here's the Tech 2 Land Factor HQ just being finished, but now all of these units from Roque is coming down and dealing quite a lot of damage here now. Roque is uh, forced to stand here and probably try to retreat because that's a lot of units now. Uh, but if he gets an overcharge into this combo unit, oh, that would be lovely to see. Please let me see that. Please let me see that. Oh, two, an overcharge going here, taking out two units, lovely. 
Uh, we see some nice marking here from okay. And that was an overcharge, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, lovely overcharge indeed. Lovely overcharge indeed. And now Sin says that he can't do this without T2. And he's, he's giving up. It looks like he's just sending his command in and going down well into the red. And at 24 minutes and 13 seconds, uh, Sins has been taken out after a phenomenal, phenomenal match. Back and forth. Fantastic play. And Roque comes out uh, victorious above every expectations. And now the last player on Team 2 is Bullydozer. And now we're going to speed things up a little bit. Because uh, I don't really see how Bulldozer would be able to survive this uh, simply. He has the gun upgrade now on his command, it would seem. And uh, he's trying to stave off the entire horde here. And But I just have to say, fantastic play from everyone on this bloody map. It's fantastic to see. I know I keep saying fantastic, but it's that, that's just a word to describe it. Amazing, fantastic, awesome, whatever word you would use. That is just amazing. <laughs> and now we see a lot of bombers just coming from okay, uh to just add insult. Oh, no, standing right next to the energy storage right here. And now, though, uh, Bulldozer is running away from all of these units here. And just trying to escape from all of these Mantis units that is coming in here. I think, really, uh, bleh, I think he will be able to do it, but there's a lot of bombers just trying here now. And, um, I mean, that's a lot of units, though, coming in from Rokea's uh, movement here. Are we looking, you know, I mean, look at that. He's just swarming with bugs everywhere. He's just swarming all over the place. That's just so many mantis. I mean, oh. I mean, you're okay. Sins, Bulldozer, everyone, you can be proud of yourself. This match is just fantastic. Bulldozer has gotten three ranks of agencies by just running and hoping he can survive, but there's so many bombers and he can't seem to be getting uh, railguns online and anti-air. And a uh, very honorable attempt, just go down like a man or a woman, depends on if you're a man or a woman. Uh, <laughs> and now we see that at the final stages, Bulldozer goes into the red. He's taking quite a lot of fire here now. He's going below 2000. And slowly but steadily, he's whittled down until he goes out with a spectacular explosion, taking out all the bombers with him. And that marks the end of this match. And I have to say, this has been amazing to see. Thank you so much to Roque for sending this in to me. I, I, I don't really know how, what to say other than fantastic. So anyway, if you, and as always, if you have, if you guys that see this have any replays you would like me to take a look at, please send them in to me. And I promise I will take a look at them. So, uh, yeah. But I'm going to end this video here now. So, thank you guys for watching this. If you liked this video, press that like button. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. All the bombers are going to jump in. That was a support commander. He took out the wrong one. Oh my god. He took out the wrong commander. And the soldier is going down. What you done?